Excuse me, I'm looking for the surf and ski shop. What am I going to do? Do you say the surf and ski shop, do you? Yeah. It's round the bend. Like poor Norman seems to be this morning. Thanks. You're welcome. Uh, fancy a cut price Rod Stewart? Pardon? Going cheap on the Harry Miller label? Uh, no thanks. <laughs> Hi, can I help you? Stan Stewart? No, Dry Smith. Uh, no, I meant to Stan Stewart in place. I've never heard of him. Well, he owns this place. No, he doesn't. Craig Carmichael owns this place. Well, I'm Stan Stewart's brother, you see, um, Robbie Stewart. Well, hello, Robbie Stewart. But you're still in the wrong place. Craig Carmichael owns this shop. I ought to know I live with the guy. In the nicest possible way, of course. Well, did Stan sell out or something? Well, I don't know. I never met the previous owners. We've been here about a year. Well, that's when Stan bought the place. Well, we've got it all written down. Um, there it is. Yeah, the street, the, the arcade, the shop. Well, it's got me beat. Look, why don't you go up and have a talk to Craig? He might know this Stan Stewart. Oh, it's the apartment block above the arcade. Second floor, number five. Robbie! Stan! For pizza, what the hell are you doing here? Waiting to be asked in. <laughs> oh, oh, matey, come here. <laughs> Gee, it's good to see you. I can't get over it. Guess I'll get you. Hey, you've grown up. And you smell like a flower shop. Yeah, well, you still smell like a vegetable patch. <laughs> That's good argument, man, for you. What are you doing here? Why didn't you let me know no, you were coming? Craig Carmichael, but is that really Listen, you? Listen, tell Mum and Dad, they are okay? I don't expect the good ancestor That's to come Hold it, hold it. Now, let's start from the beginning. Now, what are you doing here? Well, you didn't write. I didn't write. You should have let me know you were coming. I mean, I could have pushed up or something. The girl sure, come off that. I am Craig really knocked out. <laughs> now, let's start at the beginning. Good idea. <laughs> Can I help you, sir? No, thanks. Just for hours. Oh, OK. You gonna buy that love or read it here? Oh, how much is it? Three dollars fifty. Uh, I'll come back later. Excuse me, but how exactly do I fill in these coupons? Oh, it's simple, madam. I'll show you. Come oh, on. thank you very That's much. That's right. Why did you ever give it up? Kitty, I mean, showbiz, I mean. I had my reasons. Money for one. A week in work, two or three weeks out. Not exactly secure. Yeah, you know, that's the side of it the public never thinks about. Well, I did. I had to. So I decided if music wasn't going to be my livelihood, I'd push other people's music in a record bar of my own. <laughs> Kitty Adams, this is your life. <laughs> <laughs> Got more birthday cards? Yes, love, they're over there. I wanted one for my friend. She works in a massage parlour. Oh, well, I wouldn't know about that, but have a look and see if there's anything suitable. <laughs> like many happy tittle... There's nothing in the bloody pockets, eh? But there was. I bloody well know there was. Gentlemen, gentlemen. Mr. Bennett. Good day. Walter, do keep your voice down, please. I could hear you all the way along the arcade from the hairdressers. Whatever would people think? Let them think what they bloody like. Language, Walter. There are ladies present. Where? Now. What is all this undignified shouting about? Nobody's gonna accuse me of being a crook. That money was in the suit, I tell you. What money? I wore the suit of the trots last night, Mrs. Blair. Then I came in here early this morning. Clean beginning, I left my winnings in it. A cool five hundred dollars. Damn it, man, you just been through the pockets yourself, and it's not there. But it was. Mr. Bennett, are you accusing my husband of petty pilfering? All I know is the money was in that suit. Please, 
you're shouting again. A minute ago, you said it was him. A minute ago, I was merely being polite. A minute ago, I did not know I was dealing with a, a mounty bank. A what? And if you choose not to make sure the pockets are empty before bringing a garment in for dry cleaning, then it is hardly our responsibility. Don't talk to me about responsibility. I'll give you to tonight. And if I do get my money back, I'm going straight to the cops. The police? Oh, Walter. Oh, he's bluffing, Joyce. The set was only left on the premises for 15 minutes. When he came back, we went over every inch of the bloody thing, including the floor. How uncouth of the man. To think that I almost allowed myself to become familiar with him as one of our regulars. Obviously, my standards are higher than yours. No, I prefer something a little more exciting, dramatic. Something to get the adrenaline going. I don't think you'll get all you want of that over the health studio, Iris. Why? What's happened? Excuse me, duty calls. Oh. Yeah. Uh, aren't you gentlemen being attended to? No, no. Just one moment, will you? To be left lying on the floor. How many times have I told you that? Oh, uh. Oh, five times I think oh. it was, Iris. Didn't mean literally, you fool. No, I'm wrong. It's six. The sixth was last Tuesday, because that's when I hurt my foot. I wouldn't mind hurting my foot if I thought I could put some sense into you. No, look, if it happens just once more, you're out. Do you understand? Now, where's my brother in law? Norman! Norman! Now, what's going on here? There are men out there waiting to be signed in. I'm doing the best I can, Iris. Which is not and never has been good enough. Where's, um, what's the name of the girl? Wilma, where's Wilma? She walked out on me. What? She got one too many pats on the bottom from the members. It was the last draw and And you she... know, you didn't draw the stuff up. Oh, God, what with you and that overgrown half? We're just a one with any business left. None of this would have happened if Mike was still alive. He ran this place like a military operator. Style. It's hard to believe you two are related, let alone brothers. We were always different, Iris. You can certainly say that again. Now get out of here and attend to those men, and then phone the employment agency and hire a new receptionist. Yes, Iris. But it wasn't Don't my... Don't argue, Norman. Just do it. Yes, Iris. Good morning, my dear. Pot of tea, please. I can call my mother. Good morning, Mr. Marshall. Tina. Good morning, Mrs. Black. Just opening up your pinball parlor. That's right. My kind of business doesn't get going till about 11.30, so we can afford to sleep in in the mornings, can't we, love? We are open till 10 at night, you know. Yes, indeed. I don't know what the country's coming to. <laughs> Give me the keys, Dad. I'll open up. No. Please, let me. I'm not entirely useless, you know. Independent type, my daughter. <laughs> Sorry, Mrs. Blair, aren't you being sued? Well, I did try to order a pot of tea from your sister. I thought she was helping out here now. She's supposed to be. Anything to eat? Oh, some toast and plum jam. How is she settling in since she arrived from Hong Kong? Oh, my sister. Of course. Sorry. I can't get used to having a sister. 